Today's lesson is called, Is the Way You Live Killing You? Hello everyone, my name is Jeff. I'm Roger. Welcome to our show. And today we're talking about lifestyle choices that may affect your health. And so we're asking the question, is the way you live killing you? Are some of your lifestyle choices actually bad for you, such as smoking, drinking, your diet, lack of exercise, things like that? I think、uh, the obvious answer is yes. Yes, you shouldn't smoke. You shouldn't drink to excess. And yes, you have to get exercise. I've heard that these days doctors are starting to understand that sitting is actually an extremely bad thing for your health. You think, wait a minute, I'm just sitting. Big deal. I'm not drinking or smoking or anything like that. I'm just sitting at my desk all day long at work. How can that kill me? Well, it turns out that being sedentary or leading a sedentary lifestyle can also be very bad for you. It can be almost as bad as maybe smoking or drinking, though I don't think you can get cancer from sitting too long. I just think your body starts to break down due to lack of activity and proper exercise. Exercise. Anyways, folks, with that, let's go ahead and get started with our article. Yes, the name of our article is Is the Way You Live Killing You? Is Your Lifestyle Killing You? Anyways, let's go ahead and get started right after this. Is the Way You Live Killing You? It's a sad fact of life that many of the things we do for pleasure actually end up hurting us or sometimes even killing us. When we develop potentially life threatening illnesses because of the way we live, doctors call them lifestyle diseases. They are most commonly caused by smoking, drinking alcohol, not getting enough exercise or sleep, and consuming unhealthy fare such as fast food and sweetened drinks. Mary will potentially get a raise at work if she keeps doing a good work. 如果 Mary 继续有好的表现，她有可能会得到加薪。而 potentially 去除字尾的 ly 则可以成为单字 potential， 有以下两个意思。首先 ，potential 可以当形容词，指可能的。所以我们可以说 ，Janice interviewed several potential new employees. Janice 面谈了好几个可能的新员工。另外 ，potential 还可以当做名词使用，指潜力、潜质。所以可以说 ，The investors believe your product has a lot of potential, but still needs a bit more refinement. 投资者觉得你的产品潜力十足，但还需要一点改进。再来，我们看到单字 sweeten 这个字为动词，有使变甜之意。像是 Sarah used honey to sweeten the vegetable juice that she prepared for her husband this morning. Sarah 用蜂蜜来使她今早为先生准备的蔬菜汁变甜。另外 ，sweeten 除了上面的意思，还可以指增加吸引力或提高点点点的价值。举例来说 ，When Jack hesitated to buy the car, the seller sweetened the deal by offering a free gallon of gas. 当 Jack 犹豫要不要买车的时候，销售员利用赠送一加仑免费的汽油来增加吸引力。Okay, it's time for us to discuss the first part of our lesson. The title there is pretty straightforward: "Is the way you live killing you? Is your lifestyle actually bad for you?" Well, here the first paragraph begins by saying, "It's a sad fact of life that many of the things we do for pleasure actually end up hurting us, or sometimes even killing us." So, yes, indeed, we study hard at school, we work hard at the office, so. But we want to sit back and relax, and now we're being told that some of those things we do to relax are actually bad for us. If you've had a hard day at the job and you want to hang out with friends and drink a little gaoliang or something like that, well, it turns out that that might not be so good for you, even though it's a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, about a hundred years ago or so, 
maybe 150 years ago, I think, doctors used to recommend a glass of wine and a pipe at the end of every day as a cure to everyone's ails. Yes, if you did this, smoked a pipe and had a glass of wine, that your stress would go away and you'd feel better, and these things would be good for you. Well, it turns out that if you were to do something like that, that it would actually be quite bad for you. Yes, drinking the alcohol in that wine's not good for you, and also smoking that pipe. Well, smoking the tobacco in that pipe is also going to be bad for you as well. So even if a doctor said that very long ago and you followed those orders, you might have been getting into trouble because these things that you do for pleasure, even if a doctor told you to, could actually end up hurting you or harming you or even killing you in some situations. How about that? Anyway, so let's go ahead and move on. The next sentence says, when we develop potentially life-threatening illnesses because of the way we live, doctors call them lifestyle diseases. So there you go. When you have a lifestyle disease, you don't have cancer or the flu or anything like that. Yes, you just need to change the way that you live because it's killing you. Anyways, we have the first two vocabulary words to discuss in this sentence. The first of these is the adverb potentially. And yes, this word is similar to the word possibly. So when we're talking about potentially life-threatening illnesses, well, we're talking about illnesses that could kill you. For example, you could say something like this, that development is potentially life-changing. Yes, it could change your life. Now, speaking of lives and the word life, let's talk about this word lifestyle. A lifestyle is the way that a person lives. Yeah, I had a friend in high school who had a very dangerous lifestyle. He did a lot of dangerous stuff. I remember that he used to drive his car really, really fast wherever he went. Even though he was only 17 or 18 years old, he was driving that car way, way too fast. And that was just one of the things that he did that was considered dangerous. Yes, my friend in high school lived a dangerous lifestyle. Lifestyle. But here, please note that the word lifestyle is functioning as an adjective it's describing these diseases. This is a special term that doctors are using. These are lifestyle diseases that could actually harm you. They could actually cause you to die early or get sick. So you got to watch out for these things. Now, moving on to the next sentence here, it says, they're most commonly caused by smoking, drinking alcohol, not getting enough exercise or sleep, and consuming unhealthy fare, such as fast food and sweetened drinks. So there you go. Those are the things that cause those lifestyle diseases. If you don't do these things, then you probably shouldn't have so many problems with your lifestyle. Let's talk about some of these things. Of course, smoking, we've already talked about that, and also drinking alcohol. Uh, in English, we often say, do you drink? Uh, in that particular case, drink means, do you drink alcohol? No, I don't drink. I'm a Baptist. It's against my religion, for example. But in this particular case, drinking alcohol could refer to drinking beer, wine, whiskey, gin, in vodka, whatever, anything with alcohol in it. There you go, alcohol. It's the active ingredient in things like beer, wine, liquor, spirits, so on and so forth. All of those things that Roger just mentioned. And you could say only a fool would drink alcohol and then get behind the wheel of a car. Yes, if you drink and drive, you are a fool. Don't do it ever. Anyways, yes, Potentially life-threatening illnesses can come out of certain things that you do in the course of your daily life, and doctors call these things lifestyle diseases. And we all know that smoking is bad, drinking alcohol is bad, but get this. Earlier I said maybe sitting won't lead to getting cancer. Well, maybe it won't lead to cancer, but it could actually lead to other illnesses, and these illnesses could kill you Oh my goodness, these lifestyle diseases are starting to freak me out a little bit. Because yes, sometimes I don't get enough exercise or sleep. And I think, hey, big deal, I'll catch up on these things later. But then I never do. 
but maybe I should start catching up on these things. After all, if I don't, I might just develop potentially life-threatening illnesses. Maybe not cancer, but something as bad as cancer. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on here and talk about the word fair. Fair. Okay, F-A-R-E, not F-A-I-R. Fair, in this particular spelling here, just refers to food. And we don't really use it so often, but uh, if we're talking about food in general and we've already mentioned the word food in a sentence, well, we can mention the word fair. And, of course, this is a general term for the food you eat. This word could also refer to the money you pay when you take the bus or the train or a boat. How much is the fare? Well, it's $10 to take the ferry from Seattle to、uh, one of the outlying islands. But in this particular case, fare is referring to food, a range of food, or a particular type of food. And we're talking specifically about junk food or fast food, which you can get at fast food restaurants. I guess if you eat Too much of that, it's not good for you. And also, sweetened drinks aren't so good as well. I'm a good boy here. My morning coffee that I drank today, of course, was without sugar. Of course, some people think coffee is too bitter to drink without sugar. I like it that way, so I don't put sugar in my drink. So therefore, it is unsweetened, and I don't drink sweetened drinks. Okay, that brings us to the end of the first part of our lesson. Let's move on to the next part. We'll listen to it first. Unhealthy habits are frequently linked to medical conditions like heart disease, cancer, stroke, and diabetes. The choices we make, or are forced to make, because of our busy lives. Cause damage that adds up slowly over time and makes us sick. This is bad news for those of us living in developed countries. As a country gets richer, people's habits tend to get unhealthier, and death rates from lifestyle diseases rise. That's why they are also called diseases of affluence. Dear, 部分我们看到名词 stroke， 课文中指中风。例如 ，After my grandfather had a stroke. He has been having trouble moving his right arm. 我爷爷中风后，他的右臂开始活动不便。而 stroke 除了上述的用法之外，还有以下两个意思。首先 ，stroke 当名词时，还可以指笔画或笔触。举例来说 ，Chinese characters are made of strokes written in a certain order. 中国文字是借由特定顺序的笔画所组成的。另外 ，stroke 还常常当动词使用。指轻触、轻抚，所以我们可以说 Jean stroked her dog's fur to calm it down. Jean 摸她狗狗的毛，让它平静下来。Okay, is the way you live killing you? Yeah, this is a scary title, and as I read on. I get more and more scared for my well-being. Yeah, for the most part, I think I lead a pretty healthy lifestyle. But hey, I do sit around a lot, so I don't get enough exercise, and sometimes I don't get enough sleep. So these things are starting to worry me. Because yes, I know that smoking and drinking and eating junk food, those things are bad for you and can also lead to bad stuff like life-threatening illnesses. But who would have thought that maybe Sitting too much or not getting enough sleep could do the same thing. So I'm getting worried here. Anyways, yes, it says next: unhealthy habits are frequently linked to medical conditions like heart disease, cancer, stroke, and diabetes. So there you go. There's the big C that I've been worrying about this whole time. Yes. Maybe sitting around too much, not getting enough sleep. Maybe these things can even lead to cancer. The big C, a really big killer. Now we also have the word stroke to talk about here. Cancer is bad. Strokes are bad too. But what is a stroke? A stroke is an attack. Okay, it's an attack in your body that involves the heart. And the brain. And when I say an attack here, I'm not talking about armies or anything like that. I'm talking about a health event that is not good for you. Something bad that takes place in your body that makes you sick or incapacitates you in some way. But back to the word stroke. During a stroke, a piece of cholesterol, a piece of bad cholesterol, leaves your heart and. 
becomes lodged in your brain, often resulting in brain damage. Yeah, a stroke is a lot like a heart attack, but during a heart attack, that bad piece of fat or cholesterol gets shot back into your heart and causes a problem, whereas with a stroke, that bad piece of fat or cholesterol, it gets shot up into your brain, and that's not a good thing. For example, you could say, Bob was never the same after suffering a stroke. Indeed, or my grandmother had a stroke when she was 50 years old and had difficulty walking afterwards. And also, these things could cause diabetes, which, of course, is too much sugar in your blood. You know, your body can't handle the sugar. And the choices we make or are forced to make because of our busy lives cause damage that adds up slowly over time and makes us sick. So we, of course, have busy lives, so sometimes we don't really pay attention to what we eat. And all those things add up over over time, they accumulate and they can make us sick. And of course, this is bad news for those of us living in developed countries. And as a country gets richer, people's habits tend to get unhealthier and death rates from lifestyle diseases rise. So yes, as the country gets richer, you can start Having things that aren't so good for you, like smoking more or drinking and things like that, maybe working too much and not getting enough exercise, so these lifestyle diseases can cause death more and more. Yep, and that's why they're also called diseases of affluence. Yeah, affluence here is a noun. It comes from the adjective affluent, which means rich. You've got a lot of money. You're prosperous. So these countries get richer, they get more affluent, and they start to develop these diseases, diseases of affluence. Poor countries won't have these diseases. All right, folks, with that, it is time for us to take a break. But when we come back, we'll wrap up the first part of our article on lifestyle diseases. The good news is that there's a remedy. We can make good choices now so that we have a better chance of escaping these diseases later on in life. In some situations, it's also possible to reverse a disease we already have by making big changes in our lives. We simply need to choose healthier habits. Remedy. 像是, I tried many different remedies for my cold, but none of them seemed to work. 我尝试了许多不同的治疗, 但对我的感冒依旧没有任何改善作用. 而remedy除了可以当名词之外, 还可以当动词使用, 有解决补救之意. 我们可以说, Installing antivirus software remedied John's computer problems. 安装防毒软体解决John电脑的问题. 最后我们看到动词, Reverse, 用来指逆转,反转。例如, After the boxer failed a drug test, the governing bodies reversed the result of his last fight. 由于拳击手未通过药检,管理机构推翻了他上一场比赛的结果。而 reverse除了当动词使用外,还可以当形容词,指相反的或反向的。所以我们可以说, Vincent's mother used reverse psychology to get him to do what she wished. Okay, everybody, it sounds like we're quite pessimistic in today's program. It sounds like we're quite negative. All these bad things are happening to yeah, I'm, us. I'm freaked out. I'm scared, man. Me too. But we've got some good news here. The good news is that there's a remedy. Okay, so if you have a problem, if you have some kind of sickness or disease, you're always looking for a cure or a remedy. A remedy is basically the same thing as a cure, just to something that uh, solves the problem, especially if it's a disease. It's a medicine, basically, to get rid of your sickness. There's a remedy. So let's uh, move on now to the next sentence. It says, we can make good choices now so that we have a better chance of escaping these diseases later on in life. Yes, there's still time. It's not too late. We can make some good choices. Make some changes in your lifestyle. Quit smoking, drink less, exercise more, etc., etc. And don't forget to sleep. Make sure you get those eight hours in every night. You want to make sure that you sleep plenty as well, because apparently not sleeping enough can lead to problems later on. Yes, we can make good choices now, 
so that we can escape these lifestyle diseases, these diseases of affluence later on in life. Anyways, the next sentence says, in some situations, it's also possible to reverse a disease we already have by making big changes in our lives. So maybe you're a little bit older and you haven't been living the most healthy lifestyle and you already have a disease of affluence. Well, here's some good news. It's possible in some cases to reverse a disease. So let's say you have a disease. It's getting worse. It's progressing. If you do the right things, sometimes you get better, okay? The disease kind of starts to go away. It starts to go in remission. So here, this is good news. Yes, sometimes you can reverse these diseases of affluence. Why? Because this word reverse means to turn something around or to make something go backwards, okay? Yes, to reverse a disease in this situation is to cause it to become less severe. You cause it to go away, etc. For example, you could say, we need to reverse course. We've been going in the wrong direction for hours. So here, literally, we need to turn around. We're on the wrong path here. We have to go back, reverse course, because we've been going the wrong way for a long time. And as an example of reversing a disease, I've heard that it's possible to reverse diabetes, if you have it, by changing your diet. Eat uh, fewer carbohydrates and eat more protein and fat and uh, don't eat so many grains and things like that. It is possible to reverse diabetes or even eliminate it. So there is hope there. I wish we could say the same thing for cancer, but I guess the uh, thing we should do about cancer is to prevent it from happening in the first place by making some lifestyle changes ahead of time. Okay, so we simply need to choose healthier habits that might much is certain. Okay, that brings us to the end of our explanation for today. Here comes our Chinese teacher. Hello,同学，大家好，我是Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点。课文一开始提到说。Hello, Hanny. It's a sad fact of life that many of the things we do for pleasure actually end up hurting us or sometimes even killing us. 这是令人难过的人生事实。我们为了追求享乐而做的许多事情,最后却会对我们造成伤害,有时候甚至让我们丧命。好,句子里面有一个偏语动词 end up, 它表示最后处于怎么样，以什么什么告终，常常用来表达在没有预期的情况下，结果变成怎么样怎么样。好，那特别注意，end up 是不及物用法，后面要接补语。那这个补语可以是形容词、现在分词、过去分词或是介系词片语。像课文里面 end up 后面就是接现在分词 hurting 和 killing 来当补语。好，那我们来造个例句。The letter ended up in the trash can. 那封信最后是出现在垃圾桶里，我们当初是没有预料到这件事情。好，那这个例句是用介系词片语。in the trash can 来当受词补语补充说明这个受词 the letter 那个信件的状态好那读到课文第二部分倒数第二句他说 as a country gets richer people's habits tend to get unhealthier and death rates from lifestyle diseases rise 随着国家越富裕 人们的习惯常会越来越不健康 而文明病造成的死亡率也随之增加。好，句子里面的 tend to 它是用来表达往往会怎么样，经常会怎么样。那这是用来表达经常发生的动作或是习惯。举例来说， Bob tends to overeat when he's stressed. Bob 压力大的时候，往往会吃太多，会吃过头。好，那我们就顺便来学一下 tend 的其他用法。像第一种，你可以用 Tend to somebody, 或者是 tend to something, 来表达照顾照料某人或某事物。举例来说, Someone will need to tend to the fire. 必须要人把火顾着哦,否则他可能会熄灭。好,那么第二种用法,你可以用 tend toward, 加上名词, 来表达倾向于什么,容易表现出什么样的特质。举例来说, Carol tends toward pessimism. Carol 倾向悲观主义，那就是意思是说，他容易表现出悲观主义的样子。好，那我们接着来读课文下一句，他说。
That's why they're also called diseases of affluence. 这就是为什么他们会被称为富贵病。好，那这个句子呢？它是用 why 引导名词子句来当主词补语用。That's why 主词加动词就可以表达，那就是什么的原因，那就是为什么怎么样怎么样。例如 ，He was diagnosed with cancer. That's why he quit smoking. 他被诊断出有癌症，那就是他戒烟的原因。好，那另外句子里面出现一个比较难的单字。Affluence. 我们来拆解它的字首跟字根。好 ，a f 这个字首呢是来自 a d， 表示朝向。a d 碰到后面的 f 就会变成 a f。好，那它的字根 f l u 这个 flu 的部分呢，表示流动，后面再搭配 e n c e 是名词字尾。同学们就可以试着联想啦。当所有的财富都流向某一个人，朝那个人流过去，那就表示那个人很有钱嘛。所以 affluence 就有富裕的意思。那我们把字尾 e n c e 改成形容词字尾 e n t， 就会得到形容词 affluent， 那就是形容富裕的意思，就跟 rich 或是 wealthy 差不多。好，以上是今天重点整理，我们回顾今天单词吧。Potentially, this deal could potentially bring in millions of dollars if everything goes well. Lifestyle. When Rick moved from the city to the countryside, he was surprised how big the difference in lifestyle was. Alcohol. In some countries, it is against the law to drink alcohol in outdoor public spaces such as parks. Stroke. Frida was lucky to make a full recovery after suffering a stroke. Remedy. Unfortunately, there isn't any easy remedy for this situation. Reverse. The city zoo hopes that improving the exhibits will reverse the falling number of visitors. 好了，那今天